Good morning, and welcome to the SyncFusion webinar, Transform Data Easily, with SyncFusion's Data Integration Platform. My name is Marisa Keller-Outen. I'm the Director of Business Development at SyncFusion, and your moderator for today's webinar. Our presenter today is Chad Church, a Product Manager here at SyncFusion. If you have any questions, you can enter them into the questions box on the right side of the screen at any time. We'll answer the questions at the end of the session and also post the entire Q&A on our blog. This and previous webinars will be available on our YouTube channel. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly tell you a bit about ThinkFusion. ThinkFusion delivers an extensive range of over 800 web, mobile, and desktop controls. We also empower businesses to get the most of the data with our enterprise solutions including the dashboard and big data platforms. We have been in business for over 15 years and are headquartered in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina in the U.S. SyncFusion has more than 12,000 customers, including large financial institutions, Fortune 100 companies, and global IT consultancies. More than 900,000 users from 125 countries trust SyncFusion in their development process. Now that you know a bit more about us, I'll hand this over to Chad to get started. Fantastic, Marisa, thank you very much. And welcome everybody. So today I'm going to talk about data integration platform. And this platform is a way to extract, transform, and load data with no coding required. This data can be stored in your repository of choice and is available for any analytics your business needs. In this particular example, I'm going to present the data in a simple dashboard. This platform is built on top of Apache NiFi, and that's a Java app that runs in a Java virtual machine, and you can have as many instances of this on a server as you wish. Now, why do you need a data integration platform? Why do you need to pull data and parse it as you wish? In this particular sample, I'm pulling data from a social media site, so it's gonna be a live feed. So how could your business use this analysis of live data? Being able to keep up to minute tabs on any process, whether it's business or, or not, is a common business need, and you don't have to pull live data. Maybe you have data spread across multiple repositories or even down some folder paths of log file structure. The data integration platform lets you schedule a process to retrieve this data or sync systems and do further analysis or some kind of reporting on top of that. Today, I'm going to use the Twitter API and I'm going to pull real-time tweets based upon a text string. So there's going to be some very simple processing of that data and then it's going to be put into a SQL database in a table. And I have a, a nice little simple little dashboard on top of it just to kind of show what's happening. Let's still take a look at what the dashboard actually is going to look like. Here is my dashboard. So right now I have two tweets that I'm looking at. Uh, one from me and one from our wonderful marketing team. And take a quick search. Now I have four tweets actually. So our marketing team has been busy. I like it. So this is what we're going to do, and the tweets we're going to see. Now, if any of you care to tweet, I'm going to show you the, the hashtag I'm searching on in just a minute. If you care to tweet, I'm going to show your screen name and whatever location you've defined, so be aware of that. And here is the actual tweet that we're looking at. So this is the string text I'm searching on. Uh, again, I'm just doing a simple text search. This is the string for all uh, tweets on Twitter. It's so going to be real time. It actually runs every second. So it's going to pull up data as we're going along. So yeah, please everybody break out Twitter and start going tweets. We'll show this live as we go along. So uh, let's move on. And while all of you are deciding on the best way to use your 140 characters to put text up here on the stream, let's give you a little bit more overview about the data integration platform. This is a drag and drop interface. There's going to be a collection of processors in the toolbar, and you could use any of them. These processors are how you're going to interact with the flow file in your data flow. So the idea is there's a data flow um, flowing like a river, if you, if you will, and there's a flow file. The flow file has data and it has attributes. And I'm going to show you a little bit of both as I go through this. Data integration platform also lets you create your own processes with C sharp code. That our health team will show you how to do that. You can do that, but that will be a whole other webinar. This is a Java app running in a virtual machine. We're going to use the Java database connectors to talk to our data sources. If you already have a particular JDBC connector that you're using, you can add it to our file directory, and it'll show up over here. So you can use it on your on your process 
flow. And your flows are run on a timer. So you can set up exactly when you want it to run, how frequently you want it to run. There's also a web API so that you can reach out and you can actually touch each individual process or process group and tell it to start exactly when you want to tell it to start. NIFI was built for the American government and the NSA was using it for its data collection efforts as recently as 2014. It may still be, we will probably never know, but this is so, the security here is built into it. And we can go look at our help at another webinar or our conversation. I can walk you through exactly how security is set up. Data provenance. Every process in the data flow is considered a processing event. Every processing event creates a time point stamp, a change log. And this is kept here. The data provenance is going to show you every decision, every change that has happened to a particular uh, data flow or a flow file whether it's the actual data or the attributes. That's all going to be available here in the data provenance. And I will show you this in just a few minutes. Now let's go take a look at that dashboard and see if we have uh, any tweaks on it yet. So I'm hitting refresh here on the dashboard. I didn't set this to run on the timer. So we have a few here. And Carter and Suresh are both uh, tweeting for us, and that's awesome. So let's uh, let's come back. See if anybody else wants to get into the anybody else wants to get on board and run with this. Let's go look at the actual process group that I'm working on. This. So this is a Java virtual machine. It runs in a it's going to run in a browser. Here it is. I'm running running this on my local host. Okay. And this is the actual designer. So we'll take a look on this um, before we jump too deep into the actual processes that are happening here. There are six prot well, So on the left over here, you're going to see our tab groups. We have the processes, we have templates, and we have servers. The process groups, this, the process components, these are all the processes that you're going to use. Imports and outports, process groups. So this whole thing here is a process group. All of this is now a process group. Uh, remote process groups, if you need to talk to another instance of the data integration platform, you may want to for whatever reason you may want to do that, that would be a remote process group. Label a funnel. The funnel is going to, labels going to do what label does. The funnel is going to collect information from many data connectors and put them all into one data object. And here are the collection of data processors right now. We have 228 different processors currently defined out of the box. You can create your own data processors, and here's uh, three that we've created, the Excel converter. We, created one for Google Analytics. So you could use this to see what Google has to say about your website. And all these other here are just uh, part of the system. All right. Now, next on this list is our templates. These are a, connection, a collection of templates. And as a matter of fact, this uh, tweet catcher that I have set up here is actually from our Twitter analysis templates. So you could drag this on and you could see a, a template to fill your data in to show exactly what uh, what this is. And I'm going to move up to the top here and just kind of pull in just to show you how this works. Let's look at a substring template. So if I drag this over here and drop it, then I have a template showing how to parse data and pull out substring information or pull information based on substrings. And that's the idea for this. So there we go. Uh, if you look at this, you're going to see a label on top where you have where you can put some information, general information about what you need this process flow to do. Uh, collection of processors that are here linked together. And this is a new data flow. This next tab over group over here connect, contains a server. So this is where you would connect to additional servers. If you needed to have multiple servers running for whatever reason, this is where you would do that. You would simply add the server here, uh, define your, your connection information, and then you're off and running. And you get to use the server as part of a process group and an external or a um, remote process group. And that's what this right here is for. So let's go take a look at the dashboard and see what kind of tweets we have coming along. And we have some more. All right. So we have a few more coming in. Okay. 
Fantastic. All right, Columbia's coming in. Columbia's coming in. That's that's great. Let's come back and let's go look at our. Let's go across the top of our of our designer here. This is a high level view of the actual data flow. So this entire thing is one big data flow, and there's subflows within it. We have 17 processors, and I have six of them actually running right now. None of them are in the error state, which is I'm very happy about. That's a good thing. Now, over here on the right, we have a collection of menus. Uh, the summary is going to give us up-to-date information on any particular uh, data flow item. So we have a number that are stopped, a few that are running, and I can step in and see more specific data. And I'll show you that from the, the actual process review. We have the data provenance. This shows, again, every data flow file that's gone through this, um, all the changes to it, and what the actual data was before and after. And I'm going to show this. We can sort and filter this by components, by name, by type, put a filter in. I'm going to show it uh, actually from the component itself. It'll be pre-filtered for me. It makes it a little, it's a little easier to look at. Control settings. Here is a reporting task that is set up as part of the application. Control settings. This is where I have defined my um, database connections. This is right here. My database connection pool is here. And the bulletin board, so each process can open up a bulletin item, and the board is going to show all those bulletins that were posted up by a process group. And then to finish the tour, we have these two items here on the, on the left, the navigate and uh, operate. Navigate is just going to be zooming and panning um, in and out of the actual canvas. And then operate is going to give you some functional guidelines or functional tools that you can use to actually start, stop, uh, look at errors, group, ungroup, do stuff like that. Um, or even delete if you decide you don't need a, a process for whatever reason. So let's step into my Twitter monitor. And here is what's actually running. So get Twitter is the part that's going to that's talking to Twitter, getting the data, returning the information. And let's take a look. A right click gives me this menu. I get to see upstream connections down. So this will give me a, a list of upstream and downstream connections. Uh, view configurations is where you actually get this set up and running. So again, we said no coding, you just configure. So let's see how you might configure this. As we step through it, um, we have the the properties is going to find the actual work that's being done. So here's where I'm talking to Twitter, and this is the text I'm actually searching on. Uh, comments is if you want to put any comments in here. As other people are looking at flows, you'll, you'll want to let, let them know. Scheduling is how often this is being run. Again, I have one second right now for this, but you can reach out with a web API and make this happen as you need it to happen. And my settings are where you're going to determine how long you expect it to last and any relationships. Right now, I only have a success relationship defined. And yeah, the, sex, the success relationship is going to be is used here, and it's going to take me to my next step in the process flow. But let's go back here and let's take a look at the, well, see, the usage is going to take it to our help. And that's a pretty, that's a nice thing to go to. Syncfusion help help.syncfusion.com and this tells us exactly what the Twitter process uh, connection will do for you. Here's how it works. And if we go up to the top of this, we're going to see all of the processors that are available and then some overviews on how you're going to use it. Now I say there's no coding required. There is an expression language because you have to do something. So the expression language guide is going to tell you exactly how to do whatever parsing you need from that JSON data. And let's go look at the actual data provenance here. This is a little bit interesting. This is all the data that's been received from Twitter. The time stamps that it was received, the actual flow file ID. So the flow files are stored by an ID value in the file path, in the folder path of this application. There is a way there you can go and you can look at it and you can manage that. Here's the provenance event. At this point, we actually receive data. It's a receive type. 
Um, here are attributes. There's very minimal attributes that were made. I haven't added any. And then here's the actual content. So I click on view. It's going to show me the actual content of this tweet. And I already have one set up. So this is what, this is the data that Twitter returns when you ask it for a tweet. All this information here. Here is the actual text that I uh, was searched on. And this is all the other information about it. So this is what you get back from Twitter. That is my flow file data. That data is going to be processed as we go through this application, as we go through this flow. So the next step in this is my JSON path. So here I'm actually going to evaluate the JSON data that has come back from Twitter. And I have a couple, I have a way to, uh, what, what am I going to do with this data? Uh, on failure, I'm going to automatically terminate it and I'm just going to stop doing anything. This flow file is just going to die if there's a failure in uh, whatever it, this thing is defined to do. And if it's unmatched, it's also going to just quit. And what we're doing here is we're actually going to create some attributes. These are attributes that I have created. Um, I typed them in and I said I want to pull this piece of information out of that Twitter file, out of the flow file data. I want to pull this data out and want to assign it to this attribute, assign that value to this attribute. That's what we're doing. I'm doing this because it should make it easier to make my answer statement later. So I'm creating a question of attributes that I'm going to use. Then we go down and we're going to route on the attribute. And the route on the attribute, this is going to determine, so this is where you will change your flow. You can say I want the data file to go in this direction or that direction based upon some property, some piece of data in the actual flow file, or some attribute that I've defined from that flow file. In this particular case, I am looking for the tweet name to not be empty and the language to be English. If it's neither of those, then I'm just going to stop processing. I could at this point decide to actually go somewhere else. So on unmatched, I could go down a different process path and handle the information that way. And that's the idea. You have the flexibility to do as you wish with this. Then we're going to update attributes. So in this case, what I'm actually doing is I'm a Signing, well, I am replacing the text. So this is some simple text cleanup is what I'm doing here. Getting rid of commas, uh, return characters, all that. Just your basic, yeah, basic text editing. Now here's, I'm actually going to create my insert statement at this point. So again, it's a replace text. And I'm actually going to create, this is my value. This is the string that I'm creating at this point. And I'm actually going to make an insert statement. So based upon these values, these attributes that I've defined, I'm going to make this. And then my put is just going to put the data into the database. It's kind of, uh, the properties here are kind of boring. This gets interesting when you look at the data provenance for it. So this again, this is every single put, every single time that I put the information database, this is what's been followed. And I have two properties here. I have a send and a drop. The send actually sends the information to the database. And here's what actually got sent in this particular case. Okay, so Suresh from Chennai sent then this particular tweet that got inserted. And then there's a drop. Drop means this came to the end of the process group and I want to just stop processing that flow file. So we're dropping it out of memory. It's going, it's going to stay in history. It'll stay in history as long as you define it. And there's a whole world of stuff we can talk about for how you're going to define how long things stay in memory and, and how much information you're going to take, you're going to keep. And as that limit's hit, it's a, it's a rolling value. So the older stuff falls out, the newer stuff comes in. That's the idea of how that's kept. But this, this is the data provenance for our put SQL statement. Let's go back and take a look at the dashboard and see what else has come in. And I'm going to refresh it. And we have a few more. So we still have some, you know, um, from India and here is coming in. Now this particular dashboard, I've set this up to be able to filter on different aspects. So if I click on Chennai, 
I get to see everybody that, that tweeted from Chennai. We have three guys here from Chennai that tweeted. If I tweet from North Carolina, we have our marketing team. Should be who shows up here in North Carolina. Or just me. Our marketing team is not North Carolina. And that's the idea behind this. You can undo this filter and let it go from there. And this is going to be the end of the presentation. It's a very simple thing, a very small process. I don't want to spend too much more time uh, talking about how exactly to set this up. We could really get in the weeds very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and give this back to Marisa. And thank you, everybody, for your time. We'll go ahead and take questions, I believe. Marisa, back to you. Great. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make myself the presenter again. Let me, let me go ahead and mention our community license. For smaller companies with revenue less than $1 million U.S. million, all Sync Fusion products are available for free. This includes all of the controls in the Essential Studio, as well as our enterprise solutions. We have plenty of customers who have built up their businesses, starting with our community license. For those of you who do not qualify for the community license, let me introduce you to our flat license. We offer four tiers of pricing tied to the size of your organization, starting at $3,995. Our global flat license eliminates compliance and licensing headaches by making sure everyone who needs a license has one, including third parties and contractors. As your team grows, you can focus on your projects instead of worrying about headcount. There are no surprise fees with the global license. If you'd like more information, please visit us at SyncFusion.com. Thank you, everybody, for attending. We really appreciate your time and interest in Sync Fusion. And please be sure to check your in email inboxes for a link to the recording of the presentation. And uh, Chad, thank you again for presenting. We appreciate it. And we hope that you join us next time for our next webinar. Have, have a lovely afternoon.